Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA, and it's our uh, final preview show of the season. It's uh, ahead of the TG Carter All Ireland finals at Crow Park on Sunday. Uh, Antrim against Fermanagh, 11.45 a.m. in the junior final at 1.45 p.m. We've got a leash against Wexford. And at 4 p.m. in the senior final, it's Mead against Kerry. And joining me to preview what lies in stores, Councillor Emma Murphy, top left-hand side of my screen. And Michelle Ryan, former Waterford star, is bottom of my screen. And Michelle, you'll be on duty on Sunday, I'm sure. What's happening? What's going down? Uh, we're the only two left standing after the last few weeks, Jack Gary. Oh, well, look, these, I all, all these predictions. I have to say, Michelle, when we went around the house to, to predict who would be in the senior final, uh, Mead Kerry, one person predicted it. It was you. <laughs> ah, look, we'll, we'll give the girls grace, do we? We'll give them a bit of grace. Um, no, look, it's it's great to be around at this time of year, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I suppose that's been the beauty of it the last few weeks is that it hasn't been easily predictable. Um, and that's what you want from any championship, to be honest. Um, because like there's no taking away from the incredible accomplishments of the teams that have gone before and the records that they've had but you know new teams just bring that extra layer of excitement and anticipation and kind of anything can happen um as we saw last year so um no really looking forward to the games um i think what we're seeing as well this year is you have teams in all three finals who, who've lost big all ireland finals whether they're senior intermediate or junior and maybe they're learning from losses as well um you know, over over all the three grades, obviously Meads had to, had had to go through all Ireland final heartbreak before they could get their ach- achievement last year. But um, maybe that that old adage of you have to lose one to win one kind of maybe things through for some of these teams, and it's uh, all to play for. I I can't say I think there's any big gap between any of the teams in any of the three finals. Um, just looking at their preparations going into into the big day, um, which even makes it even more, I suppose, eagerly anticipated. Um, but yeah, look, I'll be I'll be working uh, on co-commentary on the senior game. I'll be on the sideline for the junior game and I get to sit back and watch and enjoy the intermediate game. So looking forward to all three games ahead on Sunday. Yeah, you mentioned the fact, um, Michelle, of, you know, you have to you have to to lose one to, to, to potentially win one. Like if you think back on on the junior grade, Loud lost one, won one. Uh, Fermanagh, I think, lost one and won one. Uh, Wicklow were sorry Wicklow in 2020 lost one against Fermanagh and came back to win one so Antrim will now be hoping that it's their turn and it's pretty similar as well in the intermediate that in recent times the previous years uh, runners up have come back to win it so it, it's it, it's a very very valid point that you make uh, can I also say uh, a thanks to your dad Michelle right on the record here because I was down again in your house last night and he was talking <laughs> me through the great the teams of 97 and 98 who will be honoured uh, at Crow Park on Sunday, the Jubilee teams from Waterford who, who met Monaghan over three epic games back in the day. And he was talking me through some great names. I have them all on the list here in front of me. Annalisa Crotty, Regina Byrne, Siobhan, Orion, the Orion Twins, Noreen Wall, Fiona Crotty, Marie Crotty, Anya Wall, to name but a few. Um, absolute legends. And uh, so to honour those players as well at Crow Park, on Sunday, Michelle is going to be very, very special. Along, of course, with the 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 Monaghan teams of ninety seven and ninety eight, and you're talking about players like Brenda McInesby, Jenny Green, and Angela Larkin, Neve Kindlin, Edel Byrne, uh, Linda Gartland. You know the list goes on and on. I mean, those are when you were growing up, Michelle. I'm sure you were reared on tales of 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 these great teams and these epic matches. Um, absolutely. Well, actually, do you know what, Jackie? I wasn't reared on the tails. I was actually reared by being there and witnessing it, which was even more incredible. That's um, even better, yeah. Yeah, and, and like you named out some of the Monaghan players, I, I suppose I was old enough and bold enough to be able to research. I remember researching these players myself. I remember knowing the list of the entire Monaghan panel at, back in those days <laughs> and, and knowing who was going to be playing where and who was going to be matching up against the water for girls. But um, look, it, it's brilliant to see them recognised on the current All-Ireland final days has been, has been the habit over the last few years, apart from COVID, because it just brings a whole other generation into the current generation of players and into the young girls, I suppose, looking on. And um, 
like it's fair to say there, there there was coverage back then but not to the level that there is now and maybe you know some neighbors and villages or even nieces and nephews and and sons and daughters didn't get to appreciate maybe what the achievements was of their of their mother or their aunt or their their next door neighbor or whatever it is and it's important to be able to show that and and really highlight it um yeah. because like you know none of these players even today or tomorrow or or on sunday would be playing if it wasn't for the players that went before them because everyone has taken inspiration from somewhere so it's great to see those teams being recognized and you know long may it continue yeah absolutely just to go back to the point we we're making as well um michelle about the the, the previous winners so westmead were were champions last year were runners up the year before mead of course were champions in 2020 at intermediate level and runners up the year before um and if you slip down into the junior grade Wicklow champions 21 runners up in 20 for mana champions in 20 runners up in 19 loud champions in 19 runners up in 18 it's 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 a it's an unbelievable cycle um from you know going from runners up to winners emma just uh, back in 2001 leash won the senior all ireland title it was actually the very first time that a senior final was shown live on tg Cahar. leash haven't been back in an all ireland final since but on sunday they are i mean yeah. you, you you've kept a very close eye on the intermediate grade i know you're a big fan of this leash team but also wexford this promises to be an absolute cracker of a game yeah these this one i'm really looking forward to um and particularly the level of scoring and the open play that both have been playing all year like if it's not high scoring i'm finding a very expensive hat and i'm gonna eat it um, <laughs> it's you know it is you know two teams that are putting cricket scores up um, throughout the championship, throughout the, the provincials and throughout the league. Uh, but Leash are so exciting to watch, you know, watching kind of Mo Nerny and around Fitzpatrick in full flight, you know, um, Emma Lawler adding to that attack. It's just, they're a phenomenal outfit and they've experienced hurt and they've experienced hurt this year as well, you know. I mean, they've lost to Wexford already in that slightly infamous uh, semi-final that went to extra time and Wexford had the massive comeback. Um, you know, so they've lost to Wexford and they lost to Wexford in the, in and the All Ireland semi final last year. Correct, so yeah. they're, you know, they are kind of going to be gunning for Wexford on Sunday. And, you know, they mightn't have been, you know, in the Crow Park, um, in the Crow Park scenario for a number of years. But I don't think that's going to phase them. I really do think that they're going to do it on Sunday. And that's not to knock Wexford. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be fast paced. Um, and look, Wexford have been there. They were there last year. They experienced big hurt against Westmead. Um, you know, and it was a big win for Westmead as well last year. And Wexford will want to right that wrong. Oh. Um, but for Leash, it's it's a massive day out, and you can kind of see it even throughout the kind of the county media. Um, uh, people are getting behind them. I saw the county council wishing them well. You know, earlier on today, you know, people are getting on board, and that's great to see at women's level because we don't always see that. And um, we don't always see at ladies level that, you know, the same kind of um, traction is kind of there within the county, but it does seem to be there. And hopefully um, the leash support come up in, come up in their buses and their droves on Sunday and from Wexford as well. But, you know, it's, um, it's great to see that um, the recognition throughout leash as well for, for what they've done this year and for, you know, the achievement of getting to Crow Park. So um, it really does promise to be, to be a big one. Um, and, you know, big scoring one too. And they have obviously you mentioned scoring. They've the uh, Mo Nerney is top of the scoring charts across the country in the in the All Ireland series, um, for Leash uh, leading the way in the race for the Zucar Golden Boot. And you also have, uh, in second place, Ashley Murphy from Wexford. So not only could a TG Cahar All Ireland Intermediate title be decided on 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 Sunday, but we also might learn the identity of the top scorer from that game. Emer Smith is in with a shout from Fermanagh. And we also have Louise Nimmerhartig as well, who's in with a shout. So um, these two players, though, uh, Emma, Ashling Murphy and Moan Ernie, wow. I mean, what Phenomenal can you say? footballers. Phenomenal yeah. footballers. They're quite good, yeah. I don't know what both of them, even though I was kind of brokenhearted watching Ashling Murphy in full flight, you know, against Roscommon. She mm. like, did serious damage against Roscommon. Her physicality is just... It is just second to none. The power and pace when she's like running, like running at defenses is just it's incredible. It's my favorite type of football, which is why I I love watching them. For example, Mo Nerney can pick can kick and pick points from anywhere. Um, she has like, two beautiful feet. Um, and it's you know it's going to be it's going to be a really interesting scoring battle uh, between between both of them. But like, not, don't write off her own Fitzpatrick in that in that kind of battle either. You know she's been really contributing heavily in the scoring mm -hmm. charts. 
uh, this year. And um, I think, you know, whoever gets their defense, defensive structure right for this will win it. Um, and that's, you know, that's going to be, um, you know, that is going to be the tale there for, for both teams. Um, both teams have extremely, you know, brilliant attacks, but, you know, Wexford showed against Roscommon that they have an excellent defence and their their transition from defence to attack was really kind of the winning of that game against Roscommon, their ability to transfer the ball into their powerful forwards, turning over quick ball, turn in, into the powerful forwards and into the likes of Katrina Murray um, and then transitioning to Ashton Murphy is just, it was where they where they had the winning of that game. And again, against Tyrone. I mean, they went in as underdogs against Tyrone, a Division Two team, you know, we expected, most people expected Tyrone to come out on top of that one. And Wexford got, again, got their tactics right. So, you know, John and Lizzie are doing a great job down there. So it's, you know, if they get the tactics right against Leash, get the defensive structure, you know, they could actually, they could beat them. I still do fancy Leash though, but I do think that it's, you know, that that the defensive, um, whoever gets the defence right will win that one. Okay. Right, before we get stuck into the senior one then, so Antrim and Fermanagh kicked things off in the so we've got a Leinster Derby at intermediate level we've also got a, a Derby provincial Derby at junior level Antrim against Fermanagh uh, two teams Michelle who know each other quite well they've met three times already this year uh, Antrim have had the upper hand in Ulster and Fermanagh won in a Lidl National League match two teams who you know from the outside looking in have grown incrementally and have really hit top gear in the last couple of weeks particularly in their semi-finals running up big scores against good teams in Nimerick and Carlo um What's your, what, what, I suppose, look, what does the provincial nature of it bring to the table, Michelle? And the fact that you know each other so well, can you equate it to maybe something from your own career and playing against Munster teams and, on, on a regular basis? Does that bring extra tension or because are you more relaxed because you know a lot about the opposition? What's the dynamic there? I think with regards to the opposition, it, you're 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 a little bit more comfortable in the knowledge of what you're up against. Um, okay. You know what you're what's what's going to happen. You know the players. You're you're well versed on how they, their style of play, and you should be well versed yourself on how to counteract it. Um, I think when you have an opposition that you're that familiar with, all you have to deal with then is is getting to grips with the actual occasion itself and making sure that that doesn't play too big a part in in your mindset leading into the game and that you'd really just are able to bring it back down to the basics of a football game against a team that you know that you can beat um, should you play well. And I, I, like I was doing a bit of prep this week for, for the junior game and there were so many similarities in the two sides um, over the over the championship season. And I suppose looking at Antrim, for, like both sides would have had bad starts to certain games in their championship this year, you know, um, I, I think it was I think it was Fermanagh went one one three down to, or one five down to Carlo in the first round. Um, they were one three down to Limerick in the semi final, and then they kind of got their act together, you know, and really kind of came back at it. So they're showing that the you know they're maybe not starting as well, um, but they're able to finish out games. Now, having said that, against against Limerick, I mean, it was sixteen scores to fifteen. The goals were the difference. Mm. They really were the difference in that and. They, they need to, I suppose, sometimes when I see a team only scoring nine points, it is a little bit worrying, you know, that there, are, that there haven't been more, um, I suppose, point opportunities mm. there. But the more important thing is that the goal chances were taken as well. So, so that's a benefit to them. They know they have goal sc- scoring uh, scorers in their in their midst. We all know the name Emer Smith uh, with, with a few years, to be honest. I mean, to come out of a semi-final having scored 3-7 is pretty remarkable going no matter She's where brilliant. you're playing. Absolutely. So they have her in her armory as well, as well as, uh, as Lohim Bogan and all the others as well. So so they have a lot of positive to take for that. Now, Antrim, while they would have started slow in, in their round games, they got that together in the semi-final. They were pretty convincing in the, from the very start and kind of held the control the whole way through their semi-final against Carlo. And Carlo were a stiff opposition to them. But what I see with Antrim is in their first game, I think it was here, uh, they had 15, 12 scores against Limerick. And with each game, they were increasing their scoring rate. So they got 26 scores against New York, 21 scores in the semi-final. So they, they, they're showing kind of a gradual improvement they've improved their starts they've improved their score taking they have some incredible players in their mix as well I mean their own captain Hathi Carey is is absolutely vital to, to everything they do she's a real link and a strong player and then Saoirse Tennyson in the centre back is a real dynamic bursting forward kind of centre back who will really have to be watched to be honest um do you know the danger she can cause and what she, the opportunities she can create for others up ahead so look, what I would say is, you know, both teams are very similar leading into this in 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 their preparation. Um, Antrim seems to have, I suppose, 
fixed to a degree how, how they, they started some of their other games. But at the end of the day, it's this all Ireland final and everyone will be hoping to start well. Everyone will have their tactics in place. But that's the brilliant thing about it. It's a game of instinct and you just don't know what's going to happen until the ball is thrown in and who deals well from, from the get-go. For Mana have the experience of all Ireland finals, though, I suppose. And that's the one thing. They have yo-yoed up and down a little bit since 2017. Mm. So they've appeared in, in quite a number of junior finals since then. So they have that all Ireland final experience. Antrim have it from last year as well. There is no doubting both of these are going to be hungry to get up the steps and get a cup as well. Because at the end of the, the day, Winning matches, winning titles, it's what builds the belief. It's what makes you drive on into the next grade and hopefully progress into that. So I, it, it's a hard one to call. And I've kind of been toing and froing on it, I suppose, over the last 24 hours. Um, am I going to be put to the pin of my collar here, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's coming next. <laughs> um, Maybe, no, wait, wait, we'll wait till the end of the show. Okay. We'll do a, we'll yeah, give, do a me senior. Another, give, give me another few minutes. To see yeah, we'll stuff. do a senior, intermediate and junior okay. kind of treble countdown. But yeah, it's an interesting one because, Michelle, we also have two teams who have won both, uh, won two junior titles. So the winner will obviously win a third. Uh, Antrim were 0-9 and 12 and Fermanagh were 17 and 20. So... Mm. Yeah, so I, I think these, you know, and I'm going to ask you, and I'm not going to say what I think, which is the kind of beauty of presenting this thing, maybe. Um, but I think the three games are incredibly difficult um, calls. So that's a lovely little link to uh, the senior final, which I think is going to be close. Um, as people uh, are talking about a contrast in styles, Emma, between Kerry and me. Do you agree or... What it was, what's your summation or, or overall thoughts on this senior final? Yeah, I, I, 100%. Um, both, I mean, me, like I said in a little preview or read for you during the week, that I think that if Kerry play Kerry's style, that they have to play their own style of football to win this game. If they start playing me football or they start, you know, adjusting what they do to contrast me, they are they're going to get themselves. They surely won't deviate though at this stage, Emma. I d- I hope not. I hope not because Kerry and Full Flight have been a joy to watch this year. Um, they were a joy to watch in Crow Park in the semi final. It's exciting. It's direct. It's physical. It's passionate, um, and it's it's great to see that. It's great to see them there at this stage. They deserve to be there, um, and on the kind of level of football and the way that they've played football, um, and they can you know the team team spirit, the team camaraderie would actually remind you a little bit of me the couple of years ago. You know, they're taking the same kind of trajectory through Division 2, yeah. winning Division 2. Now they're coming in to see, like, you know, they're going to the senior All-Ireland final. Um, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great. It's a breath of fresh air for, for our game. I think it's a breath of fresh air for the championship. Um, and I think if they play their own game, they, that they will be very much there or thereabouts um, after 60 minutes. Um, Meath, Meath, have a very, Meath have gotten over the line against Galway. They've gotten over the line against Donegal and they know how to win games and get over the line. And they've proved that this year without, you know, setting the place alight. They've, you know, been able to win by a point, win by two points um, and see out games. And, you know, that, I, I, one thing that really stuck out for me in the semi-final was Emma Troy down in the down in the right-hand corner, or left-hand oh, corner, as I was saying. to a bit of ball retention that was, yeah. A ball retention. And I was like, how is she going to get herself out of here? And it was just, she was so calm so like, I could see the TGI or commentators kind of on there just in right in front of her and she'd like literally a ball five minutes or five yards out of them and just worked the ball out held onto it and like retained and retained and retained the football worked it out worked it across their goal I would have been having a heart attack it was high stakes wasn't it belted. yeah the ball would have been belted into the stand it been, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it would have been very much rose out into, into the Hogan stand um, but they can see, it was just kind of an example of how they can actually calmly see out games um, but they have a style. They've stuck to their style. I hope they carry stick to their approach. I hope they carry stick to their style. Their substitutes have been really important for Kerry then when they've come on as well. They've, you know, they've given them a, a little bit of added impetus. They've you've shown that it is a panel game. Um, so I think it is. Go- it's going to be very much a contrast to styles, but an interesting one. Yeah. No. Would you agree with all that, Michelle? I think Emma summed it up pretty well. Absolutely. I don't think I could add much more. I, I totally agree. Two different styles. I, I 
wholeheartedly agree that Kerry have to go out and play their game. I think maybe that was a little bit of what Donegal's downfall was in the first half as well. They went out to play, I suppose, a kind of defensive system against the team who had kind of mastered that defensive system and quick break. And when they opened up their style of play in the semi-final a little bit more, you could see they had more to offer and they could maybe punch holes where they thought they couldn't. Um, so I, I totally agree with that. Um, and do you know what? If I was Kerry, the, the only one small area I think I would be very mindful of is I don't have a stat to back this up. It's just from being at the games. Is uh, To me, um, Emma Duggan's scores, the majority of her scores come from, if you're facing the goal, edge of the D on slightly to the right hand side it's her favorite spot to kick a point from in my in my opinion and if you see her kind of drifting up that wing up into that place you need to close that shot down that's what I would say because no matter what stage of the game it's going to be she's so comfortable taking those and I'm not for one second suggesting that's the only thing she has in her armory the same kind of position where she scored the goal in the final last year too Absol Michelle absolutely yeah. it's just you can see her if interesting enough she started actually wing back in the semi-final against Sonny Gaul and just kind of kept it drifting up down that wing it, sorry in the semi-final after the in the second half throwing she lined herself up wing back and started drifting up and down there and just positioned herself always there at the edge of that d on the right hand side and that's the only i suppose spot that you could kind of say okay that's maybe a guaranteed danger area where they're going to be taking shots from but like i said that's not the only thing in their armory by any stretch of the imagination Kerry have to bring their fast play they're very strong in the middle but they leave the ball quick quickly into the forwards. Neve Carmody to me has been outstanding this year and um, and rightly so the likes of Louise Mahertig and Chief Rocher who's great to see back there as well. Kaylee Crone and Emma Costello have been, you know, acknowledged for the incredible performances. But I really think Neve Carmody as well has been such a creative link player. She sees everything that's going on. She has a hand in almost everything as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing two contrasting styles and how each team adapts to it. And I, I agree with Emma. I think if they can really throw everything at that at that mead team, that there's no reason why this won't come down to the wire. My only worry is if it's only a point or two with two or three minutes to go, that's where I think Meads will, that, I suppose the, that mindset of champions and digging results out would see me through. Okay. You've so, I tell you what, you've whetted the appetite. Right, so it's neck on the <laughs> chopping block. That's what we're um, here for, no? Absolutely. Uh, Emma, uh, Winners, senior, intermediate, and junior. Give me your three. Harry. Wow. Leash. The junior one is tough. I'm kind of glad he was not in the call. Uh, Antrim. <laughs> if you're lucky, you should be watching in later on now. And we'll be on the WhatsApp <laughs> group, so that will that, that, go hot and heavy. Um, okay, Michelle. Oh God. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go for Mana. Okay. Um, I think just the quality of Emer Smith might do a huge amount of damage. Um, I'm I'm gonna go Wexford. Okay. Um, because I just think they had such a heavy defeat last year, and there just seems to be a whole different even atmosphere among them this year. Um, and style of play and a region, kind of revival um, of energy among them this year. And I, I think that's actually the t probably the toughest one to call, to be honest, the intermediate. And with senior, I've probably given myself away already. I'm going to just about tip me. So you've gone the complete opposite, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> so you've gone Mead, Wexford, Mana, and Emma has gone Antrim, Leash, Kerry. Interesting. Right, okay. We'll the, the ultimate prediction show we'll, here now, Jackie. We'll, we'll take this conversation record. offline. Yes, Emma, go on. <laughs> Michelle has a much better track record than I have. So, I was, but this um, is the day that matters, Emma. This is finals so. day. Forget everything that's gone before this. Uh, this is where it really matters. Finals day, lads. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> we'll see you uh, uh, at Crow Park on Sunday, uh, guys. It's and uh, listen for your contributions this this, this summer. Absolutely fabulous stuff. Really enjoyed it. Um, knowledge, expertise just ticking all the boxes thank you so much so my guests uh councillor emma murphy and uh michelle ryan thanks for coming on today folks thanks Jackie.